Hi, sixth grade. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different of a video because I accidentally recorded myself with no sound. So here's what's happening. Computer, Mrs. Dominic, the me in the movie waving my hands around randomly. Um, I'm trying to explain to you what it is we're going to be doing with our machines project. You should have done the Review, uh, the brainstorm last week of 10 different types of machines and chosen your favorite one. Okay, this week what we're going to be doing is looking at its insides because the final version of this project is going to be an abstraction. You might want to write the word abstraction in your notebook just like I did. Um, there are different ways to abstract something and I'm here showing you how to abstract the letter A. You take the letter A and then you goes through some sort of change in order to be abstracted. Okay, so that one, I simplified it. I took away the most entertaining part. The second one I drew there, I multiplied it. I layered it to make it an abstraction. The third type is where I pulled it apart. So the type of abstraction we are going to be doing is the third type, where you start with something a machine in our case, and then you pull it apart into pieces. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with these four boxes. I think I was talking about abstracting colors. It's not important for our project. Anyway, for this project, I chose a typewriter to be my sample, okay? And we're going to be doing that third type of abstraction where we're pulling it apart. So last week where we looked at machines as a whole, this week we're gonna be looking at their insides, their pieces, their parts. When you start your search today on the internet, you're gonna be searching for a diagram. So this is me on my handy little iPad, and I've searched for a typewriter diagram. There are different types that may show up. There are types like this one where it's the whole thing and all the pieces are labeled for you. That's gonna help give you some sort of insight or information. It might be great for some of you, it might not for others. Another type of diagram might be like this one, where it starts to show the insides a little bit more. This is a different view of a typewriter. I'm actually looking at it from the back and seeing how things are working. Think like when you take a car and open up the hood of it and look on the inside. This third type of diagram I'm showing you is one where they took the the pieces of the typewriter physically apart and you are looking at them individually and they're all laid out so that thing i pointed to on the right was the keys the thing on the left is the hammers and i'm explaining to you like what you are actually looking at come on dominic get on with it this part isn't important come on you can do it there we go excellent now thank you very much um, there are all different kinds of diagrams, and you're going to have to find one that you are comfortable with. The nice thing about our tablets for this project is that you are going to be able to zoom in on things and see them really close up. Uh, you want to be able to zoom in because when you do start drawing these pieces individually, you want to get as close to them as possible. Our project, oh gosh, I'm going all over the place with this video, aren't I? Our final project is going to look something like this. After we have chosen three different sections of your machine, okay, for me I chose the keys, I chose the crank, that's that like rolling thing at the top, and the, and the hammers down at the bottom, that part in a typewriter that has all the letters on it, you're going to be combining it back together, okay? Ah. Here we are. This is what you are doing today. You are going to be tracing four, yes, four. I know I'm only showing you three, but you are doing four of them in your sketchbook. And in each square that you trace, you're going to be zooming in on one piece of your machine. So I've got my keys in the one and I'm sitting here like explaining every last thing you don't need to know about that. I've got the hammers in the next one that I already explained. It's the part where the letters are that smack the paper. 
And then my third one over there is the roller crank, which actually is what moves the paper through a typewriter. All three of these things are very important to make a typewriter go. When you abstract something, you're not drawing the whole piece. You're drawing, I mean the whole machine, you're drawing the pieces. So it's gonna be like clues to the viewer. Can the viewer look at these three things you've chosen and figure out from that combination what your whole machine was? All right, Dominic, come on. There we go. I've taken a post-it note. I suggest using a whole stack. I didn't have a whole stack, but you're gonna trace it four times in your sketchbook. Each one of these is going to be a different piece to your machine. Now we're doing four in here, even though on the final one, we're only gonna use three, because just in case one of them doesn't turn out, you've got a backup. It's always better to do more work in the beginning so that you are prepared towards the end. Yes, yes, yes. Tracing squares. Tracing, tracing. Da, 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 da. You can do it. Come on. Movie Dominic. Get on with it. Ugh. Yes, yes, yes. To make things even more confusing. Yes, four of them. Thank you. To make things even more confusing, I'm going to show you a different sample that I did. Here's me talking about my keys again. Looking at your diagram, making your four things. Yes, we got it. Come on, Mrs. Dominic, on with it. I really do talk a lot, don't I? I really must make better videos for you. Okay, here I'm showing you something somewhat important. I put tons and tons of detail into my little sample squares, which is what you guys are doing today. But when I went and put it on my bigger picture, I simplified it some. So even though you're putting in a ton of detail today, it may not be that detailed in the end. A couple of years ago, I did the same project. And when I did it that year, we did a bicycle. So I have three pieces to my bicycle and I'm just showing you how I fit them into the square so that it still filled that space. Yeah, the, the, um, the chain there, that first one, I do have some empty space around it, but I still zoomed in as close on it as I could so that I could see all the little details and how it works. The tire is enormous, so I zoomed in and then the handlebars fill that box as well. Oh, good grief. I'm showing you this painting upside down. What on earth am I doing? Come on, lady, flip it around. No, I'm just talking to you. Anyway, this is to show, sort of show you where we are headed. It will be a painting. You are going to be doing washes of watercolor over your, over your large square page. That large square page is one of the ones that you got in the supply box at the beginning of the school year. We're not doing anything with that today, but you are going to be heading towards it. Okay, there it is, right side up. Okay, then we're going to be taking your three pieces and overlapping them to fill that large sheet of paper. Your watercolors will give a wash to everything. I've only done the background so far in this one in watercolor. And then the rest of the pieces are going to be, you're gonna get that detail back in with Sharpie, colored pencil, oil pastel, whatever items you have at your house, that are the most um, convenient for you and you feel the most confident in. Getting perfect, perfect detail in watercolor is not for very easy and I guarantee you the brush that you got, the paint brush you got in your paint set is not going to be wonderful for it. Okay, again, that was just showing you where we are headed. Today, go ahead, look at that, do the search for the diagram, the best one you can find, and then start drawing your four pieces as zoomed in and detailed as you can get them. For those of you out there who are not confident drawers, go slowly, do lots and lots of looking. Compare what you are drawing to what you see in your, uh, in your image that you're looking at. Compare your drawing to the diagram lots of comparison back and forth and change your lines. You are totally allowed to erase. I know it doesn't look like I did in any of my drawings, but I did. I erased a lot. Okay. Anyway, that's all for now and I will see you next time. Bye.